when the dog ran off, she went from being nasty to evil, simple as that. And she's got, still got the knife in her hand, there's blood all dripping off her hand, and she's just got back into the car as if, as if, as if she just dropped off south for McDonald's. It was, that was the most horrific thing. She was just dead expressionless, no remorse, no emotions, just pure callous. For a psychopath, killing is an end in itself. I think she got off on the excitement, uh, the buzz of doing it, and once she'd experienced that excitement, had to do it again. Psychopaths get off on exerting power over people, on having control over people, and the ultimate control is to take away someone's right to life. But I'm thinking any man who walks along this road, and if you've got a dog, you're going to be the next victim. Within a few minutes, Dennehy spotted another target. She got real close and then just went medieval on this man. I mean, bang, 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 bang. And the poor man was being stabbed and still trying to keep hold of his bloody dog, for God's sake. That dog was terrified. 56-year-old John Rogers was stabbed 30 times in the arm, stomach, chest and back. And then Joe's just casually walking up with the dog in her hands, covered in blood, sat down, turned around to me and said, I've got a lovely dog here, Mark, I'm going to name it Rolo. And, and I'm thinking, that's when I broke down. I don't remember a lot after that. The police eventually found Dennehy sitting quietly inside the car. She was arrested without a struggle. Senior investigating officer DCI Brunning quickly realised this was not someone with a normal personality. Afternoon. Afternoon. The CCTV footage offers a chilling insight into the behaviour of a psychopath. What was alarming about how she behaved was just how comfortable and at ease she was with being in custody, laughing and joking with the officers. You've been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder and murder. Okay. She was swanning around the custody office as if she'd been arrested for stealing a packet of crisps. We got to know Joanne Dennehy very well in the coming weeks and months. Her ability to control people, her ability to get people to do things for her, and her ability to be so cold-hearted this police footage is uh, fascinating. You couldn't possibly have guessed, seeing this, uh, what had happened just a couple of hours before. Dennehy is quite calm. She seems happy. She's in control of the situation. She's obviously enjoying being the centre of attention. And she's even flirting with people. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's very, very typical of a psychopath in these circumstances. Lacking in emotion, glib, superficial, lacking in empathy, and enjoying the narcissistic aspects of being at the centre of this whole episode. It's rare to be able to piece together a picture of a psycho killer as clearly as this. Unsurprisingly, the psychiatric report on Dennehy for her Old Bailey trial concluded that she was a psychopath. Something pushed her button to do what she did. What I do know is that um, I don't think she would have stopped until she was stopped. The judge sentenced her to a whole life term. She will never be released from prison. She has a severe personality disorder. 
there is no reason why she would not kill again. The word psychopath, literally a sick or suffering mind, first emerged back in 1888. It covered a wide range of antisocial behaviours and mental and sexual deviancy. Psychiatrists are still grappling for the causes of this personality disorder. In the early 1900s, psychopathy, as it was called, was thought to be relatively rare. But in the aftermath of World War I, thousands of soldiers needed medical help to deal with battle trauma. In spite of treatment, many veterans still displayed mental problems like aggression and antisocial behavior many years after the war. I'm young. But the few psychiatrists there were at the time were mystified. Psychiatrists are forced to try to understand the behavior of men who have broken down in battle. And some of them present a real problem. Some of them respond to treatment, to re-education, persuasion, occupational therapy, and others don't. And whatever they do, they don't get better. And when they dig a bit deeper into these soldiers, they find that they've got poor conduct records. They've got a list of convictions for bad behavior, for fighting, for getting into trouble. It seemed they all had something in common, but what was far from obvious? It was Dr. Hervey Cleckley who made the breakthrough. He was working with psychiatric patients at an army veterans hospital in Georgia. He realized that many of the soldiers had been mentally disturbed before they became soldiers. He realized it was their personalities that were severely disordered. He comes to some surprising conclusions. He thinks that at least 18% of the veterans there are psychopaths. And this fuels his belief that it's a problem of much greater scale than anyone imagines. When Dr. Cleckley began working in public hospitals in the 1930s, he noticed large numbers of patients who behaved just like those disturbed soldiers he'd seen before. He began to identify psychopathy by making the first ever definitive list of psychopathic personality traits. Cleckley came up with 21 traits, such as superficial charm, insincerity, antisocial behavior, lack of shame, lack of empathy, and no sexual morals. In 1941, Dr. Cleckley published his acclaimed book, The Mask of Sanity. Soon the term psychopath was on everyone's lips because Cleckley's conclusions were shocking. These are people who appear to be normal. They have the mask of normal behavior, normal interactions. They're often attractive personalities, plausible speakers, well-dressed, accomplished. But the reality is, because they have no feelings, they're willing to exploit and even to kill. So they're dangerous, but very difficult to spot. But why people turn out to be psychopaths is as much a mystery today as it was in Cleckley's time. Are they born with the disorder, or is it their upbringing? Can killer Joanna Dennehy's early life provide us with any clues as to what makes a psychopath? What we know is that she grew up in Hertfordshire from a very stable environment, supportive parents, and up until uh, her early teens was, um, you know, an, an articulate, intelligent, ambitious young woman who then got involved in some minor antisocial behaviour, pretty low-level stuff. The stuff that you as a parent would hope that you'd be able to steer your child away from and just get them back to working hard at school. But she seemingly was never going to be brought back onto the rails. In childhood, it's more difficult to find signs of psychopathy. But sometimes we do, maybe in the form of cruelty to animals, uh, fire setting, or bullying other children. And certainly in Joanna Dennehy, by the time she's a teenager, there are some very definite signs of psychopathy becoming apparent. What we now know is that that 